I was lying in bed one morning and I was daydreaming, you know, when you're just sort of at that stage where you're not asleep, not awake, and suddenly it was like watching a film pass be be behind my eyes. And it wasn't, I suddenly thought, oh, I think I'll do a marathon or uh, I'll do a marathon in bras. What I actually visualised is much more how it is now with lots and lots of people, but the whole package, the bras, the power walking, the, the decorating. Um, and I remember sort of looking at it as I was watching a film. And when I actually did get, get up, I thought, God, that's a really good idea. That sounds like really fun. And um, I went down to see a friend of mine. And I walked into her office and I said, hey, do you fancy going to New York for the weekend? And she was like, oh, New York, yes. Yeah. You know, that's all she could think about. And I said, well, there is a catch. You've got, you've got to do 26 miles in a bra. And I, to this day, I don't think she ever heard me say, you have to do 26 miles in a bra. And, um, and that was really the start of it. And, and at the time, I was working as a stylist. So every job I went on, I would either get the client to uh, potentially sponsor me or there was always somebody in the crew that sort of said oh yeah I'll come and do that with you and we, we ended up with about I don't know 50 or 60 people that were all sort of like oh yeah we'll do it we'll do it um, but nothing actually happened nothing happened and then it was uh, maybe in August uh, a couple of months later and I was standing on the um, roof it was a very very hot summer day and I was standing on the roof of my friend's house and there's a whole crowd of us there, and we're all makeup artists and assistants. And, and I said, so, are we going to do this New York marathon or not? Because we'd talked about it, and we all loved the idea, but there hadn't been very much action. And sort of a few girls, went, oh, no, well, I can't do it now. I'm working. And, of course, a lot of us all worked on location. And, um, and I can remember standing there thinking, shall I do it or not? And it was a real 50-50. It would have been just as easy to say, oh, let's not bother this year or something. Um, and I said, no, I'm going to do it. Let's do it. And it was, I mean, to this day, obviously, I must have owed my life to that decision in, you know, not saying that too flippantly. Um, because I'd never done a marathon. I'd never power walked. I'd never raised money for any charities. And I knew nothing about breast cancer or I hadn't had any connections to anyone with breast cancer. So it was sort of quite magical to come up with the idea and and then it was just that split second and I think we all have it you know there's times when we think yes I'll do something no I won't and it's it doesn't seem that important at the time but of course um, it it went on to be such a major decision for me in so many different ways we went to New York in the November and we ha and we had a fabulous time I mean a lot of people I think try to make me sound as though, I mean, it's one, they don't realise that actually the walking started before I had cancer. And so they sort of see it as something that was, um, you know, a beautiful thing to do, having had cancer and to start these walks. And, you know, I mean, there was none of it. We just wanted a great time in New York. It was a fun thing to do. And, oh, and by the way, it raised loads of money. And that was also a good thing as well. And um, I think that it was in the January of, of 1997, and uh, I think I'd spent six months fundraising and being involved in this whole project. And I'd, be, I'd met a lot of people that had been involved um, and, and sort of had been through breast cancer. And I can remember press and people coming up to me and sort of saying, well, why are you doing this? And I used to say to them, well, you know, I wish I had a good story, but I haven't. It's just a great thing to do. It's fun and it's raising lots of money. And... Uh, and I can remember my awareness had been heightened and listening to people's stories, sort of thinking, my God, how do they get through this? And it really seemed to me another world that I did not want to visit. And I was just in total awe of these women that were either going through treatment or had been through treatment. And so in um, January 1997, and I found a lump. I was actually working on a shoot in Arizona. I'd, I'd only been in this place for about six hours and I was in the shower I found a lump and I think had I not had the six months prior to that where I'd been sort of had this connection to um, the walking and the breast cancer I would have just thought it was part of me I wouldn't have felt it and thought oh my god what is that I just you know maybe it was part of my period or something you know I wouldn't it wasn't anything dramatic um, but because my awareness was so heightened uh, 
I sort of had this very cold feeling. I thought, oh my God, this is a lump. And I can remember thinking, okay, it's most probably nothing and just leave it. And then a few hours later, I had another shower and I can remember consciously not wanting to feel the lump, but it was almost like my hand had to. And I felt it. And it's a, I think the whole story of Walk the Walk and this whole thing is, is very sort of magical because it's somewhere inside me, I knew what it was. I don't know, I'm sure it's, other people have felt that way. And I remember nearly fainting and having to sit on the floor of the shower and thinking, oh my God, you know. And it wasn't that I actually said the words, this is breast cancer, but I had that kind of gut feeling. And I went to see the um, lady who owned the ranch we were staying on, which was in the middle of nowhere. And I said, I have to see a doctor. And of course she was completely alarmed and is like, oh, you know, what's happened? And I said, no, I found a lump. And I suppose looking back now, she must have wondered why it was so, like I had to see a doctor that day. I, I couldn't even wait for a week until I got home. And I went to see a doctor the next day. And the doctor, and I, I really, I think at the time, I really thought she was going to say to me, no, you know, it's nothing. It's just sort of a fatty lump or something. And she felt it and she said, well, I'm not happy with it, but there's, um, I'd like to sort of have a look and, and sort of take things further. And she said, I'd like you to have a mammogram. And I thought, well, this is, sounds a bit serious, but okay, you know, I'll do that. And meanwhile, I was working and I didn't actually tell anybody in the crew that I was doing this apart from the photographer. And the next day I went to have the mammogram. And the next day I went to get the results and they said, no, there is something there. We need to do an ultrasound. And by this time, I was really getting quite hysterical inside. You know, I was, I'd never experienced anything like this and, and didn't know how to deal with it. And I was in a foreign country and, and, um, and then the, the, the following day, I went to have the ultrasound and the guy said, no, there's definitely something there and we really need to do a biopsy. And, uh. I said, well, you know, I'm about to go on a shoot to South Africa for eight weeks. Can I do it when I get back? And he just said, you're going to cancel everything. And that was really the beginning of 1997 and the end of my styling career and the beginning of my walking career, I guess. Those first few months, I mean, we, we were... A lot of the um, girls were saying, oh, you know, let's try and do London because we did have such a good time. And I wasn't sure because it takes such a lot of organising and I was sort of a bit you know, am I going to be working or not? And could I manage it? And of course, when I was, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, they all said, that's it, we're doing it. And I think it was a very um, positive thing that people around me and even people that I didn't think were that close to me could actually get involved in and do. And they felt like they were supporting me. And for me, I mean, I always say, I don't know if I led Walk the Walk or Walk the Walk led me, but it, um, it gave me an opportunity to focus on something that was connected to breast cancer but it was a very positive side and it was a very uplifting side and for me I, I've, I've always been in, I've always sort of understood health and fitness and eating well and and that that procedure I've never um, been able to come to terms with sort of hospitals and treatment so I mean really that's what happened I completely worked on getting myself fit um, I had this thought that if I, the healthier and fitter I am when I go into hospital, the quicker I'll heal. And, and so I really threw myself into it like it was a job. And, uh, and I suppose like anything, I put energy into myself. I also put energy into walk the walk and, and sort of got everybody um, supporting me because that, that helped me too. And it allowed me to be very open about my breast cancer, um, which felt very positive. And so... I guess that's what started the ball rolling. Excellent. You do feel like you've been dropped into a black hole. I mean, I just felt like I was in a black space and you're reaching out, desperately trying to find a hand or, or something that's familiar. And it, it, I mean, that's one of the reasons that we support the Bristol Centre because there are very positive things. I mean, I, I met lots of people now that have been through breast cancer, and myself included, and all of them will say, my life is completely different, but it's so much better. And, and I will second that. But it's one hell of a road to travel. And it's not one, it's, it's a road that you need somebody to show you direction.